El siguiente presentante que tenemos aquí, uh, the next presenter, his name is Pastor Craig Purchase. El pastor... Thank you, thank you. I want to just recognize all of you that's here and how important it is that, that you've taken this time to come out. I want to thank you personally for being here, for all of our politicians and just everybody that's here. I think this is such an important issue that we, that we stand up for and, 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 and speak out against that we, are, that we are all here together. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Here tonight uh, to speak why it's so important to me, why I believe God is wouldn't want doesn't want us to do this kind of thing, and why I believe that the black community should not tolerate this issue. Somebody will say amen to that. What I want to say first of all is that I all at, at one time I didn't hold the position I have now because I hadn't taken the time to listen and to look at the other side, to put myself in somebody else's shoes. It's easy to make decisions when you don't put yourself in the other person's place. You make decisions based on prejudice or, or something you don't understand. But when you really understand this issue, it's a no-brainer. first of all that my faith does not allow me to choose what I stand that's right or wrong that's right amen my faith doesn't allow me to say well this is okay to stand for and this is not okay if it's right I have to stand for it and what I want to do is challenge all of us who are people of faith all of the church folk all of the preachers all of the pastors all the choir members, everybody that sits in the pew on Sunday, to recognize the real issue here and stand for what you know is right. Yeah. This, issue, this issue is a righteousness issue. It's what's right for us to do, what's right for us to do in our city. It's not about Latino, it's not about black, it's not about white. It's what is right. It's wrong to use me, help me clean your house, wash your car, do all the jobs you don't want to do, and then turn around and kick me out of the country. They don't stand over here in a minute, amen. The Bible says that we are to treat our neighbors right. It says that we should treat one another right. In, in this economy, this situation, as they have developed this thing, it tells us back in the, I remember when Ronald Reagan was just going into the presidency and, and they were out in Ohio and they had flashed all the cameras on, 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 excuse me, amen, white people who are out of jobs in, in Ohio and they made me feel bad because I had a job. Somebody say, have mercy. And, and, what they, and what they did was, they did, they said, you black guys got the white guys job. Now they turn around and say, to, to, to black guys, amen, the Mexican got your job. No, our job is in China. Our job is in overseas. Our job. better angels, your sense of righteousness, your, the, the thing that's good about us as Americans, because we are truly good people when we really work at it, amen? amen. What, what's going on is that for us to lose, to lose our respect and to somehow, somehow give up my sense of righteousness and my sense of what I believe is right so I can get a job. 
get that. I'll get it right with you in a minute. In other words, I'm supposed to be okay with a for-profit prison. I'm supposed to desire a job for a, a, a for-profit prison. In other words, I want to put my neighbor's kids in jail so I can have a job. Y'all ought to got upset with that just because there's something inherently wrong with wanting to get over. If you ask me, being the preacher that I am, the kind of person I am, that's next to a drug dealer. That means that somebody can we tell the truth about it, amen? That means I want to make it, that's worse than a drug dealer, amen? Because the, the drug dealer didn't have me working for him and did put me. Mm. I'm going to quit in a minute, amen? I want to say a couple of things. I'm going to sit down. What happens in this, and I'm going to lie, you can fight it out too. There's a 20 year contract for a 90% occupancy. In, 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 in Idaho, they caught them, they caught this CCA company uh, cutting costs. Because when, when it's driven by purely profit, they have, they, it is, they, they, they've got, you know how business is, they want to cut it down to the finest denominator and make all the money they can. So what they did was the first thing they do is they cut back on people and cut back on protection and cut back on security. And then all of a sudden, you know what they did in one prison? They got eight lawsuits in Idaho about this, that they hired the gangbangers to control, the, to, to run the prison. What, uh, what kind of place can we endorse that CCA is at? Check it out. You don't believe me. So am I. Amen. Amen. So here we go. I want to just share this with you as I get ready to see them. If today, there's 49% more staff assaults in privatized prisons. There's 65% more inmate assaults in prisons for profit.